Hi, my name is Randy Russ, the president of Ashton Industries. Now, the video you're about to watch is a product profile of the 220TS4 scraper. It's a 22 cubic yard ejector class scraper. It's a 10 and a half foot width of cut, which means, guys, that this is just under 12 foot transfer width. So moving from one job to the other area, especially in urban areas, makes this thing maneuver within those tight urban areas much easier than some of the other machines are much wider. So what we're gonna do is walk around this machine and point out some of the features we have designed in this machine to really show you the fact that this machine is your machine for today as well as the future. Now the front of the scraper we have our new welded hitch system. It gives us a couple different things. First of all, we have the serviceability. We have a four inch vertical pin as well as a four inch horizontal pin, but the bushings between these two areas are the same shouldered bushing. So it gives good serviceability to this machine so you can rebuild it as it starts to wear its way down. The other thing that we started to take a look at is a number of your customers are running John Deere tractors and or John Deere scraper draw bars with a wider ear spacing. We can accommodate having John Deere draw bars by simply removing this four inch nut, slipping out the yoke assembly, slipping in a wider ear spacing to accommodate those 60 millimeter wide ear spacing John Deere draw bars. What we have also with this machine, it comes standard with the inch and a half hitch pin that you've seen out there for years. What you can do is you can rotate this hinge system down so you can offset ear to accommodate some of the tractor draw bar heights. If you're running some aftermarket draw bars, a little higher hitch point, you can flip this thing around because we've got an offset to our ear system. Very robust, very user friendly, but part more, more importantly, it's very easy to service. Now the front of the pole would give you the protection of damaging your hydraulic lines by a good heavy duty steel bulkhead. So if you had a separation between the tractor and the scraper, we don't have to worry about tearing off your hydraulic lines. We have a good hard connecting point to this area. A high, good robust hydraulic hose stand keeps those hoses out of the hitch area in a tight turn situation. You don't have to worry about it getting caught under here, but also a big passage area for chaining this down onto a truck. Now coming back from the front hitch, we have our front section. Now guys, you cannot cut corners on a front section because after all, when you have these tractors with the horsepowers they're getting in, as well as the tractive effort that these track tractors are providing, as well as the transport speeds, you really need to have a front section to be able to handle the tractive effort, the force, the transport speed, especially running loaded scrapers, and you really have to put some time and energy and some costs into making a very robust front section. We've done that with this series of scraper. Heavy steel panelized design that basically makes up our front pole, high quality steel throughout. What we have basically on a front section pipe is a 16 inch diameter front section pipe because what front section pipe does, it handles the torsional loads much better than square tubing. You've seen through years, a lot of our competition use square tubing and as of recently, they started to go to a round front section pipe. Ashton's been utilizing this type of pipe for years. So the pole basically grabs of this front section pipe with this transition pass fire plate, we call it. It basically allows it to wrap into the corners. There's no hot spots in, you know, implemented into the front section pipe here. Very robust connection joint here. But probably more importantly is the, the operator convenience to be able to see the blade. So what we do with this front section pipe, we get it elevated up. So we have the trailing arm, we have the front pole kind of coming down so you can see underneath this front section pipe to the blade when it's in the cut. So the operator has a great visibility to underneath this area to see what's happening at that blade. Now for customers running track tractors, quad track, challengers, RT series, we have this optional track protector which really prevents that track from getting damaged in an over centering turn that it doesn't get underneath this pole and cut through track bars. Now the front of our scraper we have a ride control system. It's a 2.11 gallon hydraulic accumulator. It's tied to the hydraulic lift cylinders of the rod and oil. It's preset at 2900 PSI, which means that any pressure that you basically get above 2900 PSI, say for instance you're going down a hole road and you got a fully loaded scraper and you hit say for instance a sinkhole, allows that pressure to dump that oil into this accumulator. Now once it goes below that 2900 PSI, it puts the oil back into the lift cylinder, so it raises it again. Some of the other competition basically will have an accumulator, typically a much smaller, but basically acts as a pressure relief valve. It gives a little bit of cushion, but then it dumps it back into the tractor drain. What happens is, especially if you have a very rough haul road and a fair distance, you keep losing that oil. So unfortunately, if you have those type of situations, there's a potential that, that blade could actually hit the ground on a haul road because you keep dumping oil off into the tractor. This keeps it all self-contained allows you to kind of relax, put it back into it, and not have to worry about basically diving the blade on your haul road. 
Now, as you can see on the front section, we have very rugged shields to protect the hydraulic system across the front pull as well as the front section pipe. Now, guys, when you're in a situation where you're top loading a machine and you get dirt spilling over, that's just what happens. And we have a very robust system that's not going to basically damage this if you do get a situation where you've got some material falling over this. But also, we have important cutouts. So if you have a situation where you need to clean out your pressure washing, you have access to get pressure washer to clean all the material out on both the hydraulic lines on the front section pipe as well as the pole. Now coming along the front section, basically we have our trailing arm. Now what we have with this system here is we want to have good visibility like I talked about before underneath the front section pipe, so the trailing arm kind of has this angulated design here. But the most important thing about this trailing arm is we got good connection between the front section pipe and the support arm itself. And that's very important, especially when you get going down a haul road and you have all this weight transition in this area. This is the area that sees a lot of that load. So by utilizing a very robust system, good depth of frame throughout, we've got a 16 inch diameter front section pipe. Basically, we got about a 22 inch span here. So we got good depth of frame at this transition. But the cylinder itself is another important thing to tie this area together here. We utilize a trunnion mount cylinder, which basically has a mounting lug near the rod end of the lift cylinder. What that allows for us, it allows us to have the connection point very close to the front section pipe, but I'll have to cover that later. The transition between this lug where it mounts into the side frame is very solid through here. So we got a six inch solid connection between the cylinder lug as well as the arm itself. Very robust uh, connection point here. So good depth of frame side to side good vertical depth of frame so you get these things going down the haul road we got good frame strength in this transition the trunnion mount cylinder because we route this connecting point very close to the front section pipe we want to keep this distance to a minimum what you'll find is some of the other competitors that run a big ear system or run cylinders horizontally to raise the scraper vertically you see a lot more hydraulic stress introduce on the machine whether it's done at the pole or along the side walls because you're running something this way to raise the scraper vertically so this is much more simpler use of power you don't see the strain and stress on frame members running the scraper cylinder horizontally so as i move this cylinder a tenth my blade moves a tenth it's very quick to respond you don't have to rely on the geometry of a cylinder orientated this way to raise the machine vertically now more importantly is, say for instance you're in a situation you need to help some assistant with the dozer and have to push this machine slightly to kind of get it loaded. What you'll find with our lift cylinders mounted horizontally or vertically like this, we don't see the pressure spike of a dozer pushing this because we're raising perpendicular to the direction of push. A lot of the scrapers that run that cylinder robot system that way, you'll see a lot of pressure introduced into the hydraulic circuit because you're basically trying to collapse that piston and cylinder system. So this is much faster responding, has less stress across the framework. I think it's just a better way to go as far as controlling the blade set at this point. The 220 basically has a little elevated approach here. So what we want to try to do is protect this rod end of the apron cylinder. So that's really where this extra capacity is basically from this space above. So what we have also is, as we get into a situation where we're top loading, we need to protect this area. So the top of the sidewall has a slight kick out to prevent material from falling over. So we kick it inward, as well as the dirt shield kind of loves, gloves behind that so we can shed the material. So we don't have those flat spots of material sitting in this area. So we really got good protection of this apron cylinder at this area here. Now the apron cylinder, while we're at it, basically shuts on extension. So as we run that cylinder open or extended, it gives us the maximum amount of clamping force you'd see at the blade to basically pinch that load off and prevent that material from leaking out. As you can see, we have Kevlar over the hoses to protect it from leaks, especially get into the area where you got debris and branches and things of that nature, protecting our hydraulics at this point in time. And basically what we have underneath here is our sequencing valve. So you're gonna basically take one wrench, rotate this trap door over. You can make the valve adjustments without having to take the whole shield off the sidewall. Now another new exciting change that we made under the new price program is we removed 11 grease cirques off the back half of the machine. So what there is basically now is a Teflon coated fiberglass bushing that's used in 11 locations throughout the back half of the machine. Starting at the base end of the apron cylinder and all the way through all the rollers on the push off, the floor roller, the hold on rollers, the four rollers on the rear truck, as well as the base end of the push off cylinder are now greaseless location. So the only greasing points you'd have would be from this point forward. Now the back of the 220, we have the four 20.5 by 25 20 ply tires. Now this is quite a bit different four tire configuration than we had previously with the 200 series because what we utilize is the pass through axle. So by doing that, we can basically have a narrower framework because we're supporting the spindle on both sides of the wheel. 
So by having a one inch plate system here, we got good uh, trash flow around the tire to get the material through here to prevent it from clogging up in, in softer conditions. But probably more importantly, because we utilize a pass through axle, we can mount those tires in a variety of configurations. Right now you see that these spindles are mounted in line, which provides good compaction at one time. But if you are in softer conditions and you need a little bit more flotation, what you could do is move the middle two tires back to the next sound of mounting brackets on the back end and move it back eight inches, which allows the material to get around one tire before it engages the second tire. But also, if you run in situations where you got some material building up over here, you got a lot of debris coming off tires, you can move all the tires back to this furless back position and get more eight inches of clearance between the front frame and the tire itself. We can provide more flexibility in our tiring configuration than anybody else in the market in this segment. Now on the back of the scraper, much like the front, we have a quick hitch that allows you to hook onto the second machine and basically do it very quickly and safely. So that is bolted onto this area here as well. But much like we talked about the front section, the guys are running that John Deere hitch system. If they want to pull a John Deere scraper, we can take these six bolts off, bolt on a John Deere receiver tube. Now that is not a quick hitch, it's simply a tubes receiver system that you can receive that 60 millimeter and that wider ear spacing. Or if you choose to, you can actually add a push bar extension in lieu of this hitch from the factory, or you can basically add that as a parts option on as well. So you can basically bolt all that on as a separate piece. Now the thing that we integrated on the back end here as well, we got the greaseless bushings on the whole rear truss system back here that guides the push off forward. So you don't have the grease zerks that we had previously. And that was one complaint they'd had to get the grease gun into some of these four zerks. It was very awkward to get into. Obviously you see the hydraulic lines that pull that second machine. All the 220s are sold as front units. All the framework, everything else remains the same. So we figured, let's put the hydraulics on there. There's no rear units available. They all come standard as front units. Obviously, as you can see, we talked about the LED lights on. You can basically, on a tandem operation, hook a second machine behind that, have trailing lights and, and signals basically pass through. So a very robust system back here, convenient chain down loops for the trucking companies, as well as lifting ears to raise the scraper up and put it onto, uh, onto a low boy. Now those are some of the highlights of the 220 scraper. As you can kind of see when we talked about the front hitch, the pole, the bowl, the floor, the blades, the rear push off, as well as the rear framework. I think you agree that this scraper is really designed to handle the tractors you have today as well as for the future. So if you have any questions, please give us a call. Toll free 877-634-4622 or visit our website www.ashlandind.com.